Today we're going to talk about the nervous system and about some neurological disorders that affect communication. So the nervous system depends upon the ability to process and respond to information. So things such as language function and speech we know are very important. Um, motivation, learning, behavior, so our nervous system is the master controlling and communicating system of, of our body. So there's three functions of our ner nervous system. First, we monitor stimuli. So any kind of changes that are going on in the environment, we're detecting that. Then we process inter and interpret sensory input and decide what should be done. And then that causes a motor response by activating our muscles and our glands to do something in response to the stimuli. So here's an example. So when you're driving, you see a red light. Okay, so you're monitoring stimuli. The red light means stop. So then you're processing and interpreting what that means. And then your foot hits the brake. That's the motor output of what you've decided to do based on how you've processed and interpreted that stimuli. Okay, so the nervous system, although we divide the nervous system in the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, in reality there is really only one coordinated system. And it's a relatively new science looking at the nervous system because Aristotle used to believe the heart was the seat of the soul, so the brain was often overlooked but now we are constantly learning new things about the brain. So our nervous system is composed of billions of nerve cells called neurons, and these provide the um, passageway or the juice for speech, so for movement of articulators, our respiratory control, our phonation, language, all of it is controlled by neurons. A lot of other things, but our focus today is, is on communication. So here are, um, here's a picture of a neuron, and a neuron is composed of a cell body with nucleus. So here's the cell body here, and the nucleus is the very middle. The dendrites are these projections that receive impulses. The axon, the projection that the axon, this is a projection that sends out impulses. Okay, axons are covered with myelin, and it's an insulating sheath that speeds up the communication between one neuron to another neuron. So that's how information is transferred, and it's transferred very quickly because it's got this myelin sheath protection. Um, neurons are really sensitive to oxygen deprivation, so once they have a lack of oxygen, then, they're, then they die and they don't multiply. Okay, so let's talk about neural impulses. And, um, neural impulses, they either flow towards the cell body and the brain, and these are called sensory or afferent impulses. So when we, um, let's say we touch something hot, you're sensing that feeling and that sensory information is going up to your brain. So it's an afferent impulse. Or we have impulses that travel away from the cell body and the brain. And these are called motor or efferent impulses. So I always think of efferent as exiting the body, E for exit. Um, so you may think you want to move your arm and that impulse is sent out of the brain to the muscles of the body to move. Okay, we, the way that neural impulses work is through action potentials and there's a small gap between neurons that impulses must cross and this gap is called the synapse. And there are chemicals called neuro neurotransmitters that help signal, help the signal cross the synapses. So these are just 
electrical impulses that communicate information between neurons. I will post a link to this video for you guys to watch about um, how neurotransmitters work. Okay, so the arrangement of nerves made up of neurons is into an organized system is what we call our nervous system. Now there are nervous system impairments that can have significant effects on speech and language. And so we are going to talk about if you have lesions to your nervous system, what kinds of communication problems can arise. So we're going to focus on several different disorders. The first are motor function lesions. So if there's some sort of problem with um, the motor neurons in the brain, this can cause dysarthria, which is a speech disorder. And this typically arises from, you typically have paralysis, muscular weakness, and discoordination of speech musculature. So when you're thinking about this, you're thinking about muscle weakness and paralysis. Now there's several different types of dysarthria. The, they are flaccid dysarthria, ataxic, spastic, hyperkinetic, and hypokinetic. Um, I'm not going to ask you to know each one of these. I just want you to know that there are several types of dysarthrias. Because you will take an entire class in graduate school on all of the dysarthrias. Now another motor function lesion um, is apraxia, apraxia of speech. And unlike the dysarthrias, apraxia develops in the absence of muscular weakness or dysfunction. Okay, so dysarthria, there is something wrong with the muscles where they're weak or paralyzed. And in apraxia, there's no muscular weakness. It's a deficit in motor planning. So your brain telling your muscles in your mouth to move to articulate sounds, there's a disconnect there. There's a couple of different types of apraxia. There's verbal apraxia, which is um, where you have problems initiating speech. And there's oral apraxia, which is where you can have problems with performing non-speech oral gesture. So if you um, ask the client to blow out a candle or pucker their lips, they'll have trouble performing those actions. Okay, so those are some motor function lesions. Another thing that could happen if you have some sort of um, neurological disorder that affects the brain is a CVA, which is a cerebrovascular accident, or also called a stroke. And so a stroke occurs when the supply of oxygenated blood to the brain is interrupted. Okay, so the brain is cut off from its blood supply, either momentarily or for a little while. This, a stroke can be fatal, it can leave the person paralyzed, it can affect their memory, or it can affect, or it could cause aphasia. And we're going to talk about aphasia in more detail in just a minute, but it's, aphasia is a an acquired language disorder resulting in impairment of language comprehension, formulation, reading, and writing. Okay, so, so this is just some FYI about stroke. So it's the third leading killer in the US. 700,000 Americans have a stroke each year. Okay, so that's, we have a lot of people that are typically having a stroke or that do have a stroke each year. And we have a lot in Louisiana. We live in a stroke belt where we have a 10% higher rate of stroke than the rest of the country. Okay, these are just FYI. These are warning signs of a stroke. And I think these are important to know at no matter what age you are, because you'll probably be you can be around somebody that may be having a stroke and you should know the symptoms. Um, if you or somebody you see has sudden numbness or weakness of the face, arm, or leg, especially just on one side of the body, if there's 
the person has sudden confusion or trouble talking or understanding, trouble seeing in one or both eyes, having trouble, sudden trouble walking, feeling dizzy, not feeling very balanced or coordinated, or if they have a sudden severe headache with no known cause. These are all warning signs of a stroke and you need to get the person to the hospital immediately. There's um, several different types of stroke. The, a TIA, this is a transient ischemic attack. This is often a precursor to a stroke. Some people will refer to these as mini strokes. Um, an ischemic stroke, this is more of a classic stroke where there is blockage of blood flow to the brain. So you see these arteries going up. There's blockage in one of these arteries to the brain preventing blood flow from happening. Hemorrhagic stroke, this is a bleed out in the brain. And once blood touches the brain cells, there is immediate cell death. And then an aneurysm is an abnormal um, ballooning effect of a, a blood vessel. It can burst. Okay, so the circle of Willis is the brain's main arterial system. So if you flip over the brain onto, if you take it and flip it over, the, this, do you see how it's circular here? This is all around the base of the brain here. And so this is the main arterial system. So all of the blood that goes to the brain flows through, through the circle of Willis first, and then it goes, branches off into the sides. So blockage and um, this, the circle of Willis are going to um, one of the arteries in the brain can cause brain damage.